This is a very quick video just to shine a light on a recent blog post highlighting a new feature in Azure within ExpressRoute, the ability to control traffic between VNets connected to the same ExpressRoute circuit. We released a blog post on this, which is fairly detailed. So please feel free to read through that in your own time. I want to jump through to one of the most powerful use cases of this feature which is going to be scenario one in the example, which is, let's say you have a regular hub spoke environment in multiple regions, as this diagram shows, and they're connected to the same express route circuit. And normally, if you do that, you will know that all the prefixes in this region at the top will bounce off the circuit and be advertised to the bottom region. And that will result in the express route circuit being used for that traffic and there's lots of negatives to that check out the article for a more detailed explanation so in this diagram you'd have a challenge to wrangle with which is shown here the red routes coming via express route if you build a global vnet peer in between the hubs and you want to leverage that for your hub to hub traffic for example when it goes through the azure firewall and the azure firewall makes a decision where do i send it it's going to prefer the red routes because they're more specific unless you, in your UDR on the Azure Firewall subnet, have the same route of the same subnet mask slash 24 in this diagram for every single route. So if you have 100 VNets at the top here in region A, region B's Azure Firewall UDR needs 100 rules. Every time you add a VNet to the top, you need to add a UDR ent entry to the bottom most customers have learned to live with this and automate it, but it's not ideal. It would be much better if we could stop the red routes being leaked from region to region via express route, and then that would let us just apply a summary route to the UDR, which would say any traffic going to, in this example, 10.100 slash 16, go across global VNet peering. That's much easier to manage, easier to set up initially, and also, if you know you will only ever deploy VNets in that supernet in region A, then it's going to work for the eternity of your use of Azure. Of course, you need this config in reverse um, on the other region to capture the return traffic. This diagram here shows what I just said to you. Um, but the feature that we're talking about, these gateway toggles, gives us that ability, gives us the ability to stop the red routes coming in. So the routes will still bounce off the circuit, but when they come into the gateway, we effectively can flip a flag on the gateway saying, ignore all those routes that have origin of virtual network gateway in this example. So using a very quick script and demo environment built by my colleague, Mark De Drug in the networking team. If you want to play with this, feel free to use his uh, lab. This will build out a networking topology with multiple regions, firewalls, spokes, et cetera, et cetera. I just added an express route circuit down the bottom, which gives you this topology here. I've got region A on the left, region B on the right. And I've decided I want to use this 172.16.00 slash 17 range on the left and 172.16.128 .0 slash 17 on the right. That's how I've split my Azure address space. That's what's available to me. And I've built this. At the moment, I don't have any global VNet peering involved. I've connected the circuit. The gateways have been deployed for a long time and therefore they're running the older config where they are allowing the routes to leak in. If we jump in here and we observe the routing information of how this is all working, we can see the challenge in, in action, as it were. So I'm going to look at the hub one virtual machine here, the effective route table. So when I look at the effective route, you can see the challenge that we have. I'm getting all of these 172.16 ranges here, which on the diagram you can clearly see, they are the ranges of all my spokes in the other region. And they're coming in via express route, see so next top virtual network gateway. So now I'm going to configure VNet peer in here, and I'll show you the required UDR config to force traffic over that VNet peer. And by the way, the reason why I was showing you the effective routes of the, the Hub 1 virtual machine, despite my Azure Firewall doing the packet forwarding, is that we can't look at the effective routes on Azure Firewall. So 
this VM lives in the same VNet, it's going to learn the same reachability as Azure Firewall, as long as it's got the same root configuration in terms of gateway propagation, etc. So on my Azure Firewall subnet, knowing that it's learning the routes that we saw before, the config that I'm going to need to push traffic over global VNet peering to effectively get the green route to win over the purple route in this diagram is I will need a UDR entry for every spoke in that other region. So you see here I've got 203, that should be slash 24, go to 172.16.200.132, which is the Azure firewall in the other region. Same for spoke four, same for five, six, seven, spoke 50. And this is how customers have wrangled with this for a long time. And you have UDRs with hundreds of VNets in until you get to the limit of 400. UDR entries. Okay, so that's the config. And of course, as, as we said, you need it in region two, pointing back to region one, and you need to manage the dynamic nature of new VNets, new UDR entries. So that's what we need in the, let's say the, the older world before this feature. Now, this is where we can finally introduce this uh, concept of this feature here. On the right, I've got my express route gateway inside of the hub here. I notice these tick boxes are ticked because this is an older gateway. If you deploy a new gateway today, these are unticked by default. So I can go in here and I choose allow traffic from remote virtual networks, which in this case will be when those routes bounce this way, block them from coming in to that gateway. And I'm going to enable that feature by unticking the tick box and clicking save. Okay, that gateway toggle feature has saved now. The config is completed in the Azure portal. I've still got my tab open to the effective routes of that Hub1 VM showing all of those routes leaking in. Let's do a quick refresh now to see the difference. So straight away, you can see that many of those routes have been removed. The only routes that we have left by our express route are my on-premises routes. These ranges are in my on-premises express route connected data center. So this removal of those routes, we're going to leverage that now because we know our VM is still sending traffic to Azure Firewall. Azure Firewall now, when it makes a decision about how do I get to these prefixes over here? Whereas before we were having to manually force the override because we had a BGP route leaking in with slash 24 pointing this way, we were having to override it with a system route pointing this way. Now, because we don't have the slash 24 routes leaking in this way, and Azure Firewall effectively doesn't know where to go for the other region, we can force it over VNet peering using a summary route, using the summary route of what we know region two will use, which is, as we said earlier, this range here. So whereas before in our UDR, on our Azure Firewall subnet, we needed these specific routes, we can update it to a cleaner config. And in this topology, the cleaner config would look like this. You would have a route just for the second region with a summary pointing to the Azure Firewall. And as we said a couple of times before, you need the same thing in reverse. So hopefully now that brings that feature to light. Hopefully it's useful to many of you. And that's how the new Express Route toggle feature for VNet connectivity can be used to enable global VNet peering to stitch together regions in a much simpler way.